There's never been a culture, religion, or history on earth without its own set of stories. Story conquers fear, bears sorrow, and joy, and teaches. Story is how we make sense of ourselves and the world around us. We carry stories inside us, and through them, preserve, witness, and pass on what matters most. Hearing another person's story broadens horizons, brings empathy and understanding. It takes courage to learn something new, a language, an idea, a way of life. It takes courage to tell a story. And to tell stories, we need words. Welcome to Healing Words. My name is Esther Yang, your host, and what you hear before were the words of our guest, Dr. Neela Vaswani. She's a writer, author of stories that collect intelligence, wonderful and magical stories, with a voice that is witty, sharp, innovate, and unique. She's also one of the founder and vice president of the NCV Foundations, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping people care for themselves in both mind and body. Welcome, Neela. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is so amazing of all the things that you do. So, so what are the stories that got your interest? Um, well, both of my parents are sort of natural storytellers. They're the kind of people uh, who make a little trip to the mailbox into a big story. My mother would come back from the mailbox and tell me all about what the birds were doing in the trees and what the neighbor across the way was doing and everything was just sort of a story in her hands. So are you the only child? I'm an only child but my grandmother came from India to live with us for a while and my, um, my Irish grandfather lived with us from when I was born till when he died when I was 18. So it must be really interesting coming from the Irish Catholic story through the Indian story. So was your dad Hindu? Yeah, he's Sindhi. Um, yes, and okay. traditional Sindhis are religiously mixed. So they're predominantly Hindu, but Hinduism itself is generally syncretic and, and mixed. Mm -hmm. um, but, but Sindh is in a part of, it was in India, now it's in Pakistan. And it's, it's in a part of the South Asian region where Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Sikhism all sort of coexisted right. and naturally combined. So my father was a little bit of all of those things. And then also um, his whole family would always have um, a little Virgin Mary on their artery right. plates and everything. So also a little bit of Christianity sort of thrown in as a lot of Hindus. Yeah, so so I, I know that you, you have your PhD, uh -huh. okay, but, um, but what is it that got you interest to have these foundations besides the fact that it was your grandfather and your dad with the medical degree and everything? But what really that made you have this spiritual awakening that said, you know, this is it. I'm going to do this because just for the sake of humanity or helping lit literacy. But what is it that triggered that? Um, I, I just fundamentally believe in the power of words mm -hmm. and also in self-realization and in every person's ability to, to help themselves. Um, and, and the importance of knowing your own story, owning your own story, telling your own story, how that gives people strength and confidence and the ability to, to do more in their lives and, and to help others. And my parents did raise me with a sense of social responsibility um, and, and also just being natural storytellers. I, I, I kind of came to understand um, that the way to make sense of myself and these two seemingly opposing cultural traditions right. and languages and religions um, was through story. Like I remember my mother um, telling and it's me, an effect to oh, on absolutely. both sides. It's absolutely a benefit. I think society, especially when you're a child, you sort of think, "What am I? If I don't fit here and I don't fit there, then I'm lesser." You know, right. if you don't, if you fall between, you feel lesser, especially as a child, just because of the the, the forces of society. Um, and life just kind of being black and white and categorized. But, um, but I, I grew to understand that the ability to move between, to see more than one perspective, and having been raised up in two different cultures like that, it, it's, it's a benefit and a strength. What is, I mean, you also do adult literacy. Right. And again, what really got into you that said that, hey, this is it, I wake up in the morning and that's what I want to do for adult literacy. Well, my grandmother, um, who came from India to live with us, uh, life, she didn't speak any English, um, and life was more difficult because of, because of that for her. And I remember just simple things, like going to the grocery store. Uh, she, she needed me there with her, and my parents yeah. were both at work, and she relied so she on her Hindi? going. Hindi and okay. Sindhi, okay. both. And, um, but no English, and my Hindi and Sindhi were 
Oh, mambo jumbo. Exactly. All <laughs> like mixed my, together. Like my English. Chinese and Indonesian. But exactly, go ahead. right. Okay. It becomes its own language. Hindi, Hindi, English, all in we one. We mixed it all. Right, okay. right. Um, we understood each other just through, through love and laughter, and sometimes it seemed we, we weren't speaking the same language, but we could still always make each other laugh. We were always on each other's side in this silent, unspoken way. But I, but I could see how her life would have been um, less lonely and she would have had more individual power if, if she had been able to speak English. But on my Irish side, um, I had a few uncles who um, remained illiterate till the day they died as adults because there were 11 kids in the family, um, right. they didn't have money, and um, they had to drop out of school early to, to, support to, to support the family. So they didn't get the opportunity here in New York City in Hell's Kitchen um, to, to, to learn how to read and write. And that also made their lives more difficult. So just, just within my family, I had this understanding, but also as a writer, as a teacher, as someone raised up in stories, as someone who, who drew upon stories for my own personal strength, I felt this will, this will help people, learning how to read and write. So I started tutoring at the Seward Park Libraries right. with the um, NY, New York Public Libraries Adult Literacy and ESL program, I guess it was about four years ago. And I just was so moved and amazed at the courage of, of the students there. And they just seemed like everyday heroes to me. And what was mm. so beautiful was that they didn't think of themselves that way. Um, you know, you'd, you'd see mothers coming who had three children and just wanted to learn English so that they could help their children with their homework so they'd do better in school. Right. Um, and we had one older woman um, who had kind of, she had taken too many pills because she couldn't read the medicine bottle wow. and become sick and realized I need to take better care of myself this way. And I had students who had, um, none of their employers or family members knew that they couldn't read or write and so they had these terrible stresses and pressures. And, um, and low self-confidence because they had to pretend all the time. Mm. And they were brilliant, all of them, had fantastic memories, had, could give street directions perfectly without ever having read the street signs, but just, but just had never had the chance to learn how to actually read and write the words. Wow. So um, all of these things were just so inspiring to me already in a, in a personal family kind of way. But then the experience of tutoring um, and, and the huge triumph of just learning five new words and differentiating between a noun and a verb and then writing a sentence and then writing a paragraph and then putting right. own story into words, seeing that happen for my students. I have chills just saying it. And it I'm sure they have chill for themselves too. Absolutely. And you know? they gain so much confidence and strength from it. And, and um, I had one student go on to take her G GED. Um, and d it depends, of course, upon what level you enter, how quickly you get there, but I mean, just, I, I just started to think a lot about what is the true measure of success? Is it, you know, making a gazillion dollars and fancy titles and expensive high heels, or is it, is it what you can achieve and, and what you do, and is it learning to read and write so you can help your children? I, I think also that um, the responsibility that you have for society that it sounded to me like you share your experience that has benefit other people and certainly benefit your students. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know if you watched the Super Bowl. I, my husband did. I heard the Super Bowl. Okay, from the, the Super Bowl is like from the Colts and the, um, oh, yeah, the, the, New, the, Orleans the New Orleans, right? Yeah. And so they asked this quarterback, they said, do you feel like um, more power, to, I mean, more burden because like they expect you to win? Because literally, the Saints have never won, never even got into the Super Bowl. Right. But what was striking was he just said, no, he became like more of a responsibility that this is what I had to do right. just for the, you know, for New Orleans because everybody, you know, really looked down at them after, you know, yeah. they had to go to the Dome and they were even thinking of leaving right. New Orleans itself. And so, again, you know, it was the responsibility of that quarterback and the whole team felt that we really needed it. And what was amazing and ironic was that the Manning family, the Peyton Manning, hmm. also came from New Orleans. Because hmm. their father was, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, Archie Manning was the, um, was the quarterback right. uh, for the Saints. And he became the spokesperson for the Saints. So I thought it was a very ironic and how they did it together and built this whole uh, town together, or New Orleans anyway, so right. um, with so much love and, and, and with a 
what I call like a healthy rivalry. Yeah. And and so that was amazing uh, about it. I have eight brothers, so I watch football all the time. Right. But I'm uh, amazed that from even from your mom's side of the family, what eleven children, and that you're the only child. Right? Yeah. And so what they did was they really sounded like pour all your love to you. Or maybe some sort of like your mom just want you to have the best of everything and your dad too. And, and so that you somehow now have that benefit from both sides and made that. And so now this NCV Foundations, you are one of the founder of NCV Foundations. Um, yeah, we're a not-for-profit foundation based out of New York City, but we do most of our work um, in India and throughout the United States. And uh, we named the foundation, my father and I, for my grandfather, uh, whose name was Nani Kram Chabaldaswaswani. And um, he raised his family in a refugee camp outside of Bombay. Um, and uh, as, as so many people have endured throughout all of time, um, the partition of India sort of left my family homeless mm -hmm. and so they stayed in the refugee camp for a while and then worked their way up and my father came to the States in 1971. Um, he'd gone through medical school in India and he came with $44 and two pairs of socks in his medical degree he always likes wow. to say. So and he met my mother here she's Irish Catholic and um, so the foundation is sort of dedicated to both education initiatives in literacy and then also medicine and he sort of takes care of the medical aspect and I take care of the education. Uh, the foundation actually gives money yeah. so and how you actually create award for the author right so yeah. tell me about your the first book that I mean what made you create this because not only that you create a trigger of something you obviously create a trigger for the youth as well Right. Um, well, the basic, basically the Storylines Award, which is part of the Storylines Project that the NCV Foundation founded, it's a, it's a two-pronged award. And right. first, the foundation awards the book that the author wrote. And we select a book based on its ability to uh, reach young adults as well as adult literacy and ESL students. So, so we, it's three categories. Yeah, we wanted to just make sure because there are some young adult books I think that an adult can read and get pleasure from it in some way but it right. won't necessarily touch them or move them or teach them just because it's more grounded in one age level. Right. And so we, we, looked for, we look for books um, that can reach people across generations that right. are just more human centered rather than age centered. Um, so the, the award goes to the book by the author. That's mm -hmm. one part of it. And then the author comes to the New York Public Library for one night and speaks to all of the students in the adult literacy and ESL program about writing and literacy. And he has read pieces of writing that the students have written and submitted. He selects four pieces as the Storylines Award winners. They share the award with him. Wow. And each of those students get $500 each, and then he picks 10 honorable mention so it's two students from each of the seven centers in the city um, get selected. But this adult literacy does it come just from the public library or it yeah. comes from the um, in high school? It's only for the adults enrolled in, in the New York Public Library Center for Reading and Writing program and I really wanted to do that because it's a free program it's one of the only free programs in the city there's tons of um, great adult literacy and ESL programs you have to pay money to get into them right. so I, I just I've always loved libraries in general and spent a lot of time there and so there's my daughter yeah they're just, I mean, they're just like they're just like a gift from the universe it seems are. like it's it just books. like whoa <laughs> books, any whatever you want to do it's true they're they're incredible and they 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 anchor a neighborhood they bring a neighborhood together right. especially here with all the branch neighborhoods it, I just love that libraries do that and I love that these programs are free um, the doors just open if, if you're willing to learn if you want to learn you can go there and you can learn and free books free books free computer use which right. is so important these days in, in addition to getting people to learn how to read and write just computer literacy helps people to get ahead right. um, so it, the library also offers that as well as some cultural programs neighborhood programs they do a lot of um, free medical they have doctors come and just talk to people about hypertension and diabetes and eating healthy 